G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we're going to be taking a look at a list I've compiled of the best AFL teams that have not made a grand final. You may have come across this sort of content before. I believe Druzy made a video not that long ago about the best teams that have never won a grand final. But in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at specific teams in a given year who were that good but failed to make the grand final. Now we know in the modern game sort of landscape that the team that wins the minor premiership often doesn't win the Premiership. If I'm not mistaken, only Collingwood back in 2010 and Hawthorne in 2013 have done it over the last 10 or 11 years or so. But it's another thing again for the team that wins the minor Premiership to not even make the last day in September. So in today's video, I'm going to nominate six teams that were minor Premiers, played the season out really strongly, but failed to make the grand final and thus are largely forgotten. We'll start off with Essendon's 1999 team who finished the home and away season with a record of 18 and four and 126%. It was a record that included a 26 point win over the eventual Premier's North Melbourne and a 76 point win over the team that would eventually knock them out, the Carlton Footy Club. Now for those unfamiliar, this was an Essendon team that boasted greats like Michael Long, James Hurd, Matthew Lloyd and Scotty Lucas. On top of winning the minor premiership, they would come out in the opening final against Sydney Swans, win by 69 points and earn themselves both a bye and a home prelim final against Carlton. Now the Dons were heavy favourites to win this prelim. They were paying $1.18 to win and the Blues were paying a huge $4.50. Now the Blues would get the jump in this game to lead Essendon by four goals at halftime before the Dons would fight back and regain the lead at the final change. The Dons kicked very poorly at goal in this game, registering 14, 19, 103, and this wasteful kicking a goal ultimately cost them the game. The Blues were able to pull off one of the great finals upsets and beat the Bombers by a point. Now we know that in 2000, a year later, the Bombers came out and became one of the most dominant premiership teams ever in history, but there's no doubt they will look back on the 1999 failed finals campaign as a missed opportunity. The next team we're going to highlight is Port Adelaide in particular in the 2003 season. They went 18 and 4 throughout the home and away season, winning the minor premiership. They had three extra wins than second place and four extra wins over the eventual premiers at Brisbane. Now it's also worth noting that Port Adelaide actually did this two years in a row. They went 18 and 4, won the minor premiership, but in both 02 and 03 failed to make the grand final. Now in both years, they would beat the Lions in the home and away season. The Lions, of course, winning the premiership in both seasons, but but again, in both years, Port Adelaide would stumble at the first hurdle being the qualifying final, setting up away prelims in both years. Now, despite being the top team in these years, they would lose both prelims by 54 points and 56 points, respectively, earning them the unenviable title of being finals chokers. Now, as we all know, the power wouldn't have to wait too long. In 2004, they managed to win the minor premiership again, this time made it all the way to the big dance and knocked off the champion Lions side in the grand final by 40 points. Keeping with the South Australian theme, we're going to take a look at the 2005 Adelaide Crows outfit that finished minor premiers with a record of 17-5 and 136.5%. Now, of course, the grand final in 05 was played between Sydney and the West Coast Eagles, and it's worth noting that Adelaide beat both of these sides in the home and away season, with their win over West Coast coming in the final round in Perth for them to overtake them into the top spot. Unfortunately for the Crows, they would bottle the opening qualifying final against the Saints in Adelaide, thus setting up another tough trip to Perth to take on the Eagles in the preliminary final. Now, as we know, the Adelaide Trows fell short in that game and the Eagles went on to play Sydney in what would become a famous grand final. Now, unfortunately for the Crows, the pain of this would be doubled 12 months later as the Eagles broke their hearts yet again in a prelim, again to play Sydney in the grand final and again after a top two finish on the ladder. Now, much is talked about the West Coast and Sydney rivalry over the 2005 and 2006 seasons, but Adelaide are definitely the forgotten club of this period, despite finishing above the Swans in both seasons. That Mark Rusciuto led Adelaide team is certainly one of the best teams I've seen to not play in a grand final. Next up, we're going to talk about the Fremantle Football Club, who in 2015 won their only minor premiership with a record of 17 and 5 and a percentage of 118.7. Now, the Dockers would gain top spot in round four and then went on an incredible run, starting the season 9 0 with big wins over West Coast, North Melbourne, and the D's in particular. Now, we knew Nat Fife was a brilliant player going into the 2015 season, but this is the season that the talks about him being a potential legend of the game really ramped up. He was in incredible form and 
and famously went head to head with Patrick Dangerfield when the Dockers took on the Crows and the Dockers claimed what would become a famous 11 point win. Now later in the season, Fife would cop some injuries. I believe he sustained a bruised sternum. He couldn't quite sustain the same level of form and Fremantle's wind was well and truly taken out of their sails. They would limp over the line into top spot before an unconvincing qualifying final win against the Sydney Swans saw them earn a home prelim against the Hawks. The Hawks were far too good in that prelim final and the Dockers missed out on a date with their crosstown rivals, the West Coast Eagles, the following week in the grand final. Now there's no doubt that the Dockers ended the 2015 season in very unconvincing fashion. The Dockers would plunge into a rebuild the following year in 2016, but you have to look back on Nat Fife's injury mid-season and there is a certain what if factor about it. Another one of the best teams to fail to make a grand final would have to be Richmond's 2018 campaign where they went 18 and four, finished on top of the ladder, two games clear of West Coast with a percentage of 136%. Richmond led the ladder up until about round eight before losing it to the eventual Premier's West Coast, but when West Coast dipped, Richmond made no mistake and won the last seven games of the season to clinch top spot. They would easily outclass Hawthorne in the opening qualifying final of the 2018 finals before earning a bye and taking on the Magpies in the prelim. Now, few people saw that result of that prelim coming where the Tigers were absolutely blown away by Magpie side that weren't given that much of a chance. Being both the reigning Premiers and the minor Premiers that year, Richmond were highly fancied to win that game, but Collingwood absolutely blew them out of the water. It remains one of the greatest AFL finals upsets we've seen in the modern game. And 2018 will be the what if year for Richmond having won in 2017, 2019 and 2020. There's a case to be made for that prelim final costing them a four pick. Now it's time to take a look at the 2019 AFL Premiership season where the Geelong Cats finished first with a record of 16 and six and a percentage of over 135%. The Cats were a particularly miserly team that year only conceding 1462 points that season which is 1500 better than the next best and the next best percentage after theirs of 135 was 17 less. The Cats along with the Brisbane Lions were the clear best team that year over the home and away season and there were only two rounds that season where they weren't on top of that ladder. Sadly for the Cats, their finals performance would let them down, losing the opening qualifying final against the Magpies at the MCG, forcing them to go the long way and take on Richmond in a prelim final. Along the way, they had to beat the reigning premiers, the Eagles in a semi-final, but no one really wanted to come up against Richmond in a prelim, despite what happened 12 months earlier. Prelim against the Tigers was an absorbing battle. It did look at times like Richmond were gonna to fall to the same fate that Collingwood handed out to them a year previous, but Geelong would fall three goals short of making that grand final. And as we know, the Giants would make their first grand final that year and got absolutely slaughtered. Given how good and dominant Geelong were through the home and away season, I have no doubt that if they'd made the grand final instead of the Giants, we would have been treated to an absolute classic. That's it guys, that is six great AFL teams that I've seen that have failed to make a grand final. Let me know in the comments as always if you have any particular memories of any of these teams or if you think there's someone I've missed that you think is a better nomination. As always, I'd appreciate you liking the video if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate you subscribing if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video.